thank you so much for this introduction and this opportunity to uh, for me to come and chat with all of you. Uh, I would like to keep it as interactive as possible. Um, you know, as I see you all, I see the future of India, you know, sitting here. The next 10 years of India are going to be really very different for us and for India and especially for Tamil Nadu. You know, in 2011, when, uh, you know, this uh, guy called Mark Anderson, who I think did the uh, mosaic browser, he said, you know, software is eating the world. And, you know, it, it has literally come true. Uh, you see data everywhere. It is no part of our life is uh, aloof from use of data. It may be the smallest, uh, you know, device we use or the smallest action we take. Somebody is using what we are doing for some purpose. It could be a visit to the hospital. It could be a visit to the bus. It could be using your Google Maps, anything we do. And therefore, you all are, you know, as system builders to provide use of this data in a beneficial manner for the society, for your respective companies, are key to the demographic dividend we want to reap where India is today. We want to reap the political dividend, the geopolitical dividend, where India has raised its bar, its performance, its credibility to be a, not only a software power which you know the Y2K opportunity provided us, but in the recent times, the climate change is providing an opportunity. It is a threat, but it is an opportunity for us to be able to use and become the world's technology hub for solving difficult problems. But if we see what, how we are, the world is shaping today, the technologies are evolving exponentially. And, you know, humans, as humans, we cannot fathom exponential change. We can only see linear things. I mean, you know, one of the questions which somebody told me was that if I put, you know, 100 rupees in a bank at, say, I don't know, um, say 7% for 30 years, how much will it be? Any guesses? Compounded interest? Or oh, you're all engineers. Don't use your calculators for that. Huh? One crore? No, that's, that's too much. But I'm, I'm talking of 100 rupees. I'm not talking of, you know, 1 lakh rupees or... So 100 rupees put in 30, the, the, the median guess, if you ask anybody generally, is about 410 rupees. Actual answer is 760 rupees. So the, the exponential change, you know, it is almost 7 times to... Uh, uh, it, it, it causes us not to be able to react fast enough. And all the technologies which we are seeing today will either lead us to extinction or somebody else eating us up. It can be companies, it can be societies. We have seen VHS tapes, we have seen, you know, pagers, we have seen all that we have seen in our lifetime. It's not in, you know, I don't think uh, uh, my father's generation saw any technology which grew, matured and got extinct in his lifetime. In our lifetime, we are seeing all this happening, right? We are seeing all technologies which are emerging, maturing and becoming extinct by people who think that it cannot happen. I mean, you know, there are companies which, uh, uh, I don't know which one was that, the competitor of Netflix, the pre-Netflix, the, the, the DVD company, right? Blockbuster. Blockbuster, yeah. So they were eaten up by, you know, Netflix. I mean, and uh, now, of course, there are so many other versions which are coming and each one is improving on the other one. Customer is the center, right? The need of the customer. I think Jeff Bezos once said that uh, in his internal one of his memos saying that if the, the customer does not know what he wants, right? it's very strange. We all talk of that we should do what customer wants, but he went a step ahead. He said, I am of the firm belief that because the technologies are so uh, path breaking, the customer does not know what he wants. It is for you to imagine what the customer need might be and provide him that solution. 10 of, you know, 100 may work, 90 may not work. Uh, 
as we see there are you know the 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 changes which are bringing in and i'm talking both for companies and for society and for governance uh one of the things which is really changing the world is data which i said and iot is becoming a tool for doing that right collect data from everywhere your tools iot plus your mobile as a citizen then you have the uh, you know the storage capability and processing capability quantum computing and you know uh, the big data handling capabilities uh, you know possible you know aided by the cloud the elasticity of cloud you can do whatever you want on demand basis all these things are giving you the capability and then of course lot of uh, cheap computing power and all these three things put together right availability of data being able to handle it and then being able to process it to make sense out of it i think this is really making a change where we can see our world to be very different and tamil nadu and india to be very different the uh technologies which are you know coming up today they are also making a very significant difference in the sense that they are creating winner takes it all right i mean we remember rockefeller uh, which uh, was there in the us i think 30 40 years ago when it grew to about 40% they broke it up into some 20 companies right the oil oil uh, because of monopoly what is the share of google right what is the share of microsoft they are all beyond 50 60% in 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 search engines and you know desktop markets in microsoft in browsers and these changes are making you know us more responsible as software engineers i was reading somewhere i think there's a book called uh, its name coders i don't know how many of you have read it has anybody read coders here if you have not please read it i mean i am not a coder but i am an engineer but i am not a coder but i think it gives a beautiful uh, you know account of how coders have evolved one of the interesting things i read there was that um, coders are like you give them a problem statement and it's not just coders it's all engineers are uh, meant to be like that uh, that if you give them a problem of shooting a rocket into the sky they will create a system which shoots the rocket into the sky but they will not think what will happen when the rocket falls back on the earth so we created you know social media right but we created addictions also so we created a wonderful system to connect everybody you know the linkedin and you know the facebook and everybody but so the our challenge as software developers is to see that we also remain ethical in what we do we think of you know uh, the end cases not only in you know what if somebody enters zero but what if it is a child what if it is a newborn so end cases of humans as well we have to look into you know when we when we do our uh, you know design the systems etc i think technology is also creating lot of challenges in terms of uh, skills i know most of you will have a second job offer in your hand possibly even today and you are thinking half of you will be thinking should i go to the other company right uh, and and that that is a you know it's a it's an opportunity as well as a threat the the good part is that you can you are in a job right now where you have a demand but there are possibly tens of others people uh, tens of others whose jobs are threatened because of technology right i think the overall uh, one of the predictions which uh, wef made was that new technologies will destroy 75 million jobs but it also predicted that 113 million jobs will be created so new technology new jobs so somebody will lose a job but there has to be a process in place to reskill and upskill we in government have a responsibility to we can't do it ourselves but we have a responsibility to enable that process to kick start that process work with companies so we we started a program called nale tiran so future skills it's uh, we worked for almost 6 months on this program where we have actually uh, worked to in the last i think 7th and 8th semester for all the 50000 students of computer science electronics it in all the 750 colleges are getting to do a hands on 50 problem statement 
three credit course which is compulsory in nature where they work in teams where they they work on technologies like the cloud technologies they work on you know using how to use iot to solve a problem and that course is currently running it is one of the attempts of the government to and i saw in one of the tweeters uh, one of the recruiters had tweeted recently uh, where he went and actually was interviewing one of the guys and he said he had experience of cloud he said where the hell did you get experience of cloud the, you know colleges are not teaching cloud technologies he said that this course is happening and you know and he said who's doing that course is a government and he was you know pleasantly surprised so i think this uh, but tamil nadu is you know has that strength uh, we produce almost half a million actually graduates uh, every year of course all of us know that their skill level their ability to work in teams their soft skills their communication skills their design thinking their open uh, you know looking at problems in an open manner looking at solutions which are non traditional in nature beyond the textbook solutions that capability is very poor and all the you know i don't know if uh, you know uh, recruiters are here but i think they all are struggling with these issues today and we all want to you know work together to do that the let me come to you know a little bit on what government is doing with uh, you know with technology with uh, you know trying to make tamil nadu as a the next growth the tamil nadu wants to become a 1 trillion dollar economy by 2030 right and how will that happen will it happen from manufacturing no uh, india you know we are the i think the fifth largest economy in, we just recently crossed uk as the fifth largest economy where are we on our per capita income any guesses anybody remembers how many countries are there in the world any guesses we have i think 190 193 or something we are ranked in 2021 we are somewhere on 145th so while the size is large but you know the fruit is large but the number of people to eat that fruit are even larger so even though we have crossed uk but our per capita income is probably 110th or 120th of what is there of the uk and we can only do that we can reach that developed status by 20 you know in another 25 years only if we grow at a compounded rate of 8% every year and that will not happen from you know the existing agriculture manufacturing possibly some part of it can from come from manufacturing but most of it is going to come from services services driven by it services which improve efficiency there's something called total factor productivity uh, if you write the production equation of uh, you know of a firm any economists here nobody all all i think i'm, I'm unfortunately unfortunately i did a little bit of economics also so i can talk uh, that jargon as well but uh, you write something in an equation and uh, uh, you say left hand is not equal to the right hand you put it in the economy uh, you say okay so much capital so much labor and so much output it doesn't explain so they put in something called total factor productivity so how can you know inputs make themselves more efficient and give you that larger output that is the part which is explained by tfp and that comes from so my my paper in my phd was focused on this basically if you have a, a you know a technology which uh, the scheduling algorithms for plane every plane can be one plane for you know in a day or if you have a good scheduling algorithm it can become 10 planes right so the scheduling algorithm has made that one asset of one plane equal to two planes three planes four planes right so it becomes more effective so that is how the technology is improving the use of uh, and increasing the efficiency and that is through tfp and that is essentially what you are what you do every day day in day out or either you do a rpa you write a code for you know uh, robotizing the uh, routine processes uh, what ui path did and became a you know 30 billion dollar company um, or so many other companies which are actually doing this work today tamil nadu you know we want to also uh, bring this technology to the governance we want to make sure that you are born once right but you have to go to the government hundreds of times in your lifetime and you are on the you know on the seeking side we want to change that paradigm we want to make sure that the services come to you you don't go to the service so our our you know goal is to make 
the uh, the governance smart now smart you use usually with outcomes i mean that term is but we borrowed it for governance you want to make it swift so it is fast you don't have to wait we want to make it measurable which means you can actually measure unless you measure something you can't improve it right i mean you all know that uh, we want to make it accessible so it is not just accessible to people having mobile devices but people in villages who may who have a digital divide who don't know technology so we have this concept of we save mayams right so yesterday when the honorable cm has uh, you know announced that they will open the e save mayams in all the 234 assembly uh, constituencies we want to make it responsive when we say responsive we want we want to hear you when citizen says something we should be able to hear it how does that happen the earlier days you used to put something in you know that uh, 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 complaint box and nobody knew where it went but today we have something called a, uh, a, a very well articulated very well structured architected sorry uh we have a very well architected grievance redressal system which actually brings you you are able to get uh you know responses to your queries you can track them we are coming up with something called a state family database portal which where every citizen will have a a login where he can track everything you can upload your certificates you can see based on your characteristics what are the state schemes you can apply for you can write a a, a petition from there you can uh you can look at what is the state supporting you so if you have a ration card how much rice you have drawn how much sugar you have drawn all this information comes to one place which means you have a single point of interaction using that portal the state government reaches out to you and says you have turned 18 today here is your link to applying to you know say i don't know driving license and uh, you can apply for driving license right from there without actually we also want to make it presence less and you know we are trying to do that using live uh, liveness video shots of people some states have already tried that we are also hoping that we can you know bring that to you uh we have an agency called tamil nadu e governance agency so if any one of you is interested in actually participating in public creating public goods i know there's a lot of money in private sector uh, but there might be something uh, some people who are interested in giving back to the society working at a little lower wage although we pay well we are not we are not bad pay masters you can get really good good work experience i think there are a couple of my colleagues are here somebody is working in aiml uh, where are where is gokul and uh, there they are right so we should give them a round of applause they are working in uh, you know they they are giving back to the society uh, we 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 wrote two, uh, two we wrote two applications one is called e parvey now this was developed in house right it is an application to detect cataract it has a 96% accuracy you just take a android phone you take a picture it sends it to the server it does a image matching comes back saying you have a cataract or not once you have cataract the the doctors can then we have a tremendous shortage of ophthalmologists people become blind in villages i mean you might some of you your parents etc may have you know suffered from that they didn't know that they are having cataract and you know unless they were taken to a modern hospital glaucoma which happens then we did a another uh, you know pro, uh, an application for e pest so you know paddy and uh, rice i think paddy and rice those two crops and two two pests so a farmer can actually just take a picture and upload it he gets a recommendation what is the course of action you have to do Now, these are these are applications which can you know make a lot of difference for the masses i mean you guys are working for the people who have money in their pockets right we are working for those guys but i think there is a lot of satisfaction in so if anybody is interested in doing that work there is a agency called tamil nadu e governance agency you can work full time we also have provision for taking you as volunteer so if companies allow you know not moonlighting volunteering uh if you want to do you know volunteering there is a provision you can spend 2 hours 3 hours so for example we are struggling with an issue called uh, suppose you have multiple databases and there is no unique key across them like aadhar we just have name and address 
and I don't know, um, how do you match them? So I did this, uh, we solved this problem in uh, way back in 2015, uh, actually prior to that, when I launched the uh, direct cash transfer for LPG. I'm sure all of you have received the subsidy in your bank accounts for LPG cylinder at some point of time. And that's the world's largest cash transfer program. I finished that in 2015. And prior to that, we, we dealt with this problem where the IOCL, BPCL and HPCL, these three oil companies had three databases and each one of you possibly had multiple connections because it used to take long time to get the refill. So you have one connection in IOCL, one in BPCL and you will book in all the three, whichever comes first. We don't know. We wanted to deduplicate it. And so we had to do name match. Um, and that's a, it's a difficult exercise. It's n square complexity. It's exponential, exponentially difficult. We ran that without a unique identifier on something called Param. Has anybody heard of Param? Param? It is our, it was the first couple of versions of our supercomputer developed by CDAC. It ran for 40 days, the national database, and then it crashed because it is n squared. It's just, you know, taking one and then running across 12 crore. Then we broke it down to, you know, a district level and we developed some, you know, suspect candidates. We weeded out almost three crore connections from uh, 12, 12 crore. Uh, we published all the list. So very interesting problems to solve, right? I mean, these are all uh, very, very difficult problems to solve. I think I've taken a lot of time, uh, but all I want to say is that, you know, you all are doing a good job. Chennai is a SaaS capital. We want to become, uh, bring AVGC as, you know, number one position for Chennai. We are working towards that. Um, we have a good skill set here, low attrition rates, uh, lower by about 10%, I think, compared to Bangalore, our competitor. Uh, we would like people to, you know, be here. The I know of a company which shifted the entire operations from West Bengal to Madurai. They are, I think, one of the leading, uh, you know, building manufacturer software companies. Because 80% were Tamilians in that. And now, so the tier two, tier three cities are becoming really a place to work. Work from home is becoming easier. We are rolling out a program called BharatNet. As we speak today, we have got 12,000 panchayats. We are bringing one, giga, one gigabits per second GPON connectivity to all the village panchayats. 250 village panchayats are already lit up with one gigabits per second. By six months from now, the entire Tamil Nadu's panchayats will be connected. And then the next set of problems starts. How do you connect panchayats to the last mile? Uh, content, you know, what content will you provide? So very, very interesting, uh, you know, problems. We are coming with, uh, we are starting uh, thinking to do a program where we will do a, a smart districts. So essentially what you do in private sector, we want to put, for example, 1 million IoT devices across the state and start getting that data, put it in a data lake server and put sufficient intelligence in place so that I, I spoke about responsive and smart, right? And that's how we make it responsive. How does this, how does the government look for your feedback and responds to it in real time? So with these few words, I hope, uh, you know, I have not bored you. Uh, there is a lot of opportunity in both private sector, public sector. I wish you all the best. Uh, and, uh, you know, I hope we will here, a lot of you, two more things, sorry, I will mention them. I mentioned to the organizers. We are doing an event called You Imagine 2023. Uh, it is conceived to be one of the large, largest tech innovation and skill event in the entire South Asia. It's going to happen in Chennai Trade Center, 23rd to 25th March. You should make sure that you, you know, do the dates. Uh, Karthik here have shared something. I, we need a lot of volunteers. If Tamil Nadu has to, you know, become the center of boardroom discussions, Chennai has to become a center of boardroom discussions. This event is really, really important for us. Uh, and the second thing we are doing is something called it and Hub, which is a deep tech accelerator. And this is again to boost the, the total factor productivity of the economy of Tamil Nadu. 
where we will be spending almost 100 crores over the next five years to accelerate and incubate 200 entity startups. Not general, but in deep tech. Deep tech, definition-wise, multiple technologies, more difficult problems, longer uh, you know, development time, and more patient capital. We want to, uh, we are going to do it in Anna University. Anybody from Anna University here? Any graduates? C. V. Raman Center, you know? C. V. Raman Center? So this thing is going to be in the C. V. Raman Center on the second floor, 30,000 square feet of space. Uh, we are planning to launch it somewhere in January. Uh, if you are interested, please look it up for both, both these things. One is an event, one is a, you know, a long-term project. And we look for collaboration with all of you. Thank you so much.